Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I have a very interesting encounter to share with you guys today. I was going back and looking for really old reports uh, that are pre-Patterson-Gimlin footage, and I found one from 1963 in Idaho at a place called Moscow Mountain. This is a very incredible report and one that would be absolutely terrifying to experience uh, if you were the kid that went through this. But we'll get right into the story here. My incident took place during the summer of 1963. I was eight years old at the time. The incident took place on Moscow Mountain. I believe it was the south side of the mountain. It's a small mountain near Troy, Idaho. Moscow, Idaho is not far from Troy. Moscow being the State University of Idaho. From time to time, I would ride with my father to his work site. He would buy what is referred to as a stumpage site. This site would be a small area that the Forest Service would award to someone through a bidding process. The person to which the contract was awarded to would then be responsible to clean the area of brush. My father really did this to obtain the old growth cedar trees on the site. He would then reduce the trees into posts and rails and sometimes into shakes. On one particular morning, approximately 10 to 11 a.m., my father and I were on the site. My father began to notch out a cedar that was approximately five feet across. He had real difficulty falling this tree because it had a lot of papery material inside of it. About halfway through the falling process, my father pulled the saw out of the tree and shut it off. In the meantime, I kept getting a feeling that something was staring at me. I had not yet talked to my father about my odd feeling because he always had me stand behind another tree hopefully at the opposite side of the direction that the tree was supposed to fall. He was an excellent tree feller. After he shut off his chainsaw, he looked over to me and said, I feel like something is staring at me. I said, I think it's an elk. He said, no, I think that there is a cub bear up in this cedar snag. He gave me directions to walk around the tree and look up for the cub bear. He did the same, only he walked in the opposite direction. Neither one of us saw a cub bear up in the tree. He then said to me, You must be right, it's probably an elk. Sometimes I could find elk that thought they were hidden when I would get this feeling. My father proceeded to fall the cedar snag. It fell on a slope which was thickly covered in brush that was almost as tall as I was. As soon as the tree quit moving, I ran up its trunk and had gotten about halfway up the tree's length. At that moment, something jumped onto the tree with me. It was about the same height as I stood. It stopped in front of me, looked right at me in the face. It was about eight inches from mine. I let out, as my dad called it, a blood-curdling scream. It took off on its legs, similar to the way a human would run. It went towards the top part of the tree and disappeared. I, on the other hand, could not get back to my father soon enough. My father approached me and said, I think you saw a cub bear. I responded with, no dad, I saw a big monkey. We did not talk another word about it. I believe my father thought my mother would blow a gasket if she found out what had happened. This episode took place during a mostly clear, warm summer morning. The following Monday, I told my story to my third grade teacher. She later contacted someone at the Moscow State University so as to find out if any circus animals had escaped or been lost in our area. She later told me that no animals had escaped or been lost from a circus. What prompted her to take these actions was the fact that I had told her that I thought it looked just like a chimpanzee, only bigger. I was small for my age until I hit my teen years, but it was about my size, only heavier built and much more muscular. Its face looked just like a chimpanzee. Its fur was clean, short, and shiny. It had a clean and neat look about it. This is my story and I swear on my father's grave that everything I have just told you is true. My father started to take his 30 6 hunting rifle with him to his job site after that time. He usually worked alone. So that's a very interesting encounter and it makes you wonder if these things actually do hide up in trees. Uh, at one point the father says that he thinks there's a, a bear cub up high in the tree and um, we don't really find out for sure if there was something in the tree and then he fell the tree 
and this thing went down with it or if this thing was on the ground and then jumped onto the tree but uh, there's no mistaking something that walks up to you and is eight inches in front of your face there's no chance of misidentification i don't think a bear would jump onto the tree and walk right up to you eight inches away and look at you and then run off after you scream run off like a human and you know this kid saw it up close and it was very clear and he saw every detail about it and as a kid the probably the first thing you'll relate it to is a chimpanzee these people this father and son were very isolated they were in a very remote area and they were the only ones up there and uh it was probably the perfect time to come across one of these creatures and surprise it and um if they do want to stay hidden and out of sight of people i feel like up high in a tree is where it can do that uh, i'm not sure about adult sasquatch if they would do the same thing they're a lot heavier i'm sure they have the physical capabilities of climbing trees but it seems like something that juveniles would do more so than the adults another common thing with these reports is that the people who usually have these encounters will at first feel this feeling that these people felt the feeling that you're being watched and that something is staring at you and then you get an intense feeling of fear and then that is you know what happens right before you actually see the thing and that is what happened in this story so if you're out walking around in the woods and you get that feeling you know there's a good chance there might be something around you even if it doesn't show itself maybe it's just hiding out of sight watching you observing you trying to figure out what to do how it can get away you know it, it might not be on the ground it might be up in the trees watching you so whenever you're out in the wilderness hiking around in some of these remote areas occasionally look up into the treetops to see if there is anything up there just in case these things do hide out uh, up and out of sight a lot of these areas in the pacific northwest and um a lot of these areas in the Pacific Northwest, the, the brush is super dense and super thick. And it is hard for any creature on the ground to move through the bush, especially if you get into like the west coast of British Columbia and on Vancouver Island. Like the, the bush in some of these mountain areas is so thick that it would just be a real challenge to get through. So I feel like in some spots it would be easier to go from treetop to treetop. And that would be a great way to move around and also a great way to stay out of sight if you've ever been on vancouver island like i know when i was out filming wild man my search for sasquatch i would shine my flashlight into the bush and just think like holy crap if i had to uh, escape or get through this bush somehow there'd be no way to do it at least without uh, a chainsaw so in this story the kid does describe the brush being really dense and thick on the ground so that could have been the case here the creature was up in the treetops because moving around on the ground would just be too difficult but i want to know what you guys think down in the comments below i think this is a very incredible story it's a very old one that happened pre patterson gimlin back in 1963 and those are always well they at least seem to be always the best stories and uh, they're the ones that came out um you know came out in reports prior to the big explosion of bigfoot popularity so let me know what you guys think down below thanks for watching this video we'll see you next time on mountain beast mysteries